of you, almost all of you, I am sure, will find simply outrageous. I know I did. It's the latest example of executives who are way out of touch with the country and who apparently think they deserve big fat bonuses, even though their companies are floundering. This time, it's the chiefs of the mortgage giants, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Our Brian Todd has been looking into the bonuses and the backlash. Simply outrageous, Brian, what's going on, but update our viewers. Well, Wolf, there is bipartisan outrage over these bonuses, members of Congress trying to stop them. But a lot of the bonus money has already been paid out, and that's causing even more frustration. You may not know Michael Williams, but you'd probably want to be paid like him. Same for Ed Haldeman. They're the respective CEOs of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the government-sponsored firms which back at least half the mortgages in America. According to records from the Securities and Exchange Commission, Williams and Haldeman each made about $900,000 in salary last year, and each is getting paid about $2 million in bonuses. Earlier this year, the federal government approved nearly $13 million in bonuses for Williams, Haldeman, and eight other execs from the two firms despite the fact that millions of Americans are still struggling to make it through the housing crisis and that Fannie and Freddie have been hemorrhaging cash this year. They lost $10 billion in the last quarter and just asked Congress for more money. It's just completely uh, excessive and uncalled for. Republican Senator John Thune is spearheading an effort by 60 Democratic and Republican senators to cancel the bonuses. They've sent a letter to the government body that oversees Fannie and Freddie, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, asking it to revise the compensation policy for those execs. The FHFA approved those bonuses. Why would you be rewarding this kind of behavior and or this kind of performance at least at a time uh, when we've got all these uh, national economic issues and, and people across the country are very frustrated? Contacted by CNN, officials at Fannie and Freddie wouldn't comment on the bonuses. Their overseer, the FHFA, says it's reduced executive pay at Fannie and Freddie in recent years, that those firms have to pay that kind of money to attract the kind of talent needed to manage $5 trillion in mortgages. And officials here tell CNN the reason those execs got those bonuses was because they took the right steps to turn things around at Fannie and Freddie after the mortgage meltdown. A meltdown which triggered a massive bailout from the feds. How big was the bailout of Fannie and Freddie compared to the auto bailout and some of the others? Yeah, it was about $170 billion so far uh, for both entities, both Fannie and Freddie. And I think the, uh, the, es the estimated tally, I, from what I understand from the Congressional Budget Office, is somewhere in the neighborhood of about $250 billion. So from that standpoint, it's, it's uh, large relative to these other bailouts. Analyst Cliff Rossi, who once worked at both Fannie and Freddie, says the current execs at those firms were put in place since the bailout to clean up the mess from before. He says they have started to do that, but also says they have not done enough to modify more homeowners' bad mortgages. So he's kind of on the fence about whether they deserve those bonuses, Wolf. Can the White House, can the President of the United States intervene and do something about this? Well, Senator Thune wants the White House to step in and stop these bonuses. The White House says these are independent agencies, that it doesn't have a role in assigning pay for their executives. I think Senator Thune really wants to kind of pave the way for somebody to step in maybe in the future and stop this from being and paid And remind out. our viewers, Brian, before the bonuses, That's right. these top executives are making how much a year? 900000 each. So $900,000 they make, but that's not enough. Well, you know, again, the, the argument is... I know the argument. To, right, I know okay. the argument. You told us the <laughs> right, argument. But right. they say $900,000. They can't live on $900,000. Well, they uh, wouldn't be attracted to these jobs if it were just $900,000. That's the argument dollars. they're making. That's what they're making, they're that argument. That they're not going to get people to be attracted to these jobs that are very complicated, very tough, without paying that kind of money. I suspect there are a lot of very talented, qualified people who would be more than happy to come to work for a federal government agency for $900,000 a year. When the President of the United States makes $400,000 a year, senators, lawmakers make $200,000 or so a year, cabinet members, Timothy Geithner, who's the Secretary of the Treasury, makes about $200,000, but these guys can't live on $900,000 a year. That's what they're telling you. Well, they, they're not really saying it in those words, but they're saying they deserve those bonuses because they've started to turn things around that really needed to be turned around at those agencies. Yeah. But the Treasury Department can, can attract Timothy Geithner, but uh, Fannie and Freddie can't attract qualified people for $900,000 a year. I suppose not. That's their argument. All right, right. just want to be precise.